So welcome to the ITI VPAT training. Um, we're going to do training on how to use VPATs and stuff and multiple modules and all sorts of information here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm Michelle Van Duzer. I'm the Senior Accessibility Program Manager at Oracle. And assisting me today with Q&A is um, Mary Jo Mueller from IBM. She's the Accessibility Standards Program Manager there. Get the right window. Oops. So the goal of this training, we want to set some expectations about what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to provide an understanding of what goes into writing a good accessibility conformance report or an ACR as it's often called. And the ACR is written using the VPAT or Voluntary Product Accessibility Template. Uh, we're going to provide an understanding of what to look for when reading an ACR, how to write the ACR, what goes into it. It's not just a real simple document to create. It takes a while and it's going to take some homework. Some things this training is not going to cover. Two big things here. We're not going to talk about how to do testing for accessibility. We're also not going to give you information on how to get training for accessibility testing. Uh, these are things that you can do web searches. There's a lot of resources out there that have information for you. So um, there's specialists in helping you learn how to make things accessible and how to test for accessibility. So again, do a web search, find resources there. We don't want to name some because then what we do is we miss somebody who's just as good as the others and we don't want to get into that. So we're going to focus just on after you've done your testing, how do you write your accessibility conformance report using the template? So this training involves many modules. There's eight modules. Uh, this is the module one, talking about the introduction to it all. Uh, we're going to have module two, which is preparing to write the ACR. Module three will discuss the WCAG criteria, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and how that comes into play with all of this in the VPAT and the ACR. Module 4 will cover Section 508 version of the ACR. Module 5 will cover the EN301549 version of the ACR. Module 6 will talk about what makes a good ACR. You can fill it out and still have something that's not valuable. So what, what does it mean to make a good one? Module 7, um, you filled out the ACR. Now what do you do with it? What's next? And then module eight, ACR readers and evaluators. You don't write them, you're the one that consumes them. What do you need to look for in them? In these modules, uh, various members of ITI will be doing the presentation. So you don't have to listen to me the whole time, but there will be a bunch of different people contributing to this. So goals of module one, the introduction, we're gonna talk about what's the history of the VPAT, why did it get created, that kind of thing and then where to find the VPAT and the use cases for the VPAT. So VPAT, ACR, I've already given those definitions, but let's go over it again. So VPAT is a voluntary product accessibility template versus the ACR is the accessibility conformance report. It's a lot of letters, what do, what do we mean by all of this? So the VPAT is a document that it's the template, you know, voluntary product accessibility template. So you use this to create an ACR, but this is just the template that it's pre-populated with the standards and guidelines and has all the criteria that you need to complete and instructions on how to complete it. The ACR, on the other hand, is once you filled out the, the template, you have an, a report as an end result. So this is answering how the products meet the criteria, the individual criteria, and then also it, it is a... Um, a report for conformance to the accessibility standards. So why was the VPAT developed? You know, it's a, for procurement things, it's a tool to help in the procurement process. It helps federal agencies and other buyers determine accessibility uh, of the information technology products and services that they're trying to purchase. It's a self-assessment tool you know, product companies, or vendors can use it as a framework for how to evaluate their own products and see how well they meet the individual accessibility criteria. It may also for a consistent format when reporting. That way somebody in procurement, when they're comparing the different products from different companies, they have a standardized report that they can look at, helping them to evaluate and compare which one's more accessible, meets their needs. 
It also addresses the level of support. So it enables showing how well products support each of the different requirements, guidelines, standards, that kind of thing. So ITI was involved in creating this document, and we worked with the, the GSA, Government Services Administration, to create it. So uh, oftentimes we run into this accessibility, yes, no kind of thing. You know, we get the questions, we as vendors get asked, you know, is the product accessible, yes or no? period. In a statement, you can't give any additional information. Well, this is a real big problem because it, it ignores the fact that a lot of these products that people buy are complex. You know, you have different parts that meet things to different levels. Um, and, and you as a user of a product, you might not care that certain sections are not access accessible or that uh, there's certain limits in certain areas. You know, by giving a yes, no answer, you're not going to learn all of that information. So that's where the ACR really helps fill in what is the degree of conformance of the product to whatever standard it is you're looking for. Um, ITI, uh, we wrote a white paper on this called Reporting Conformance to ICT Accessibility Standards. And it really goes into a much more depth, more detail about why just asking a yes, no question isn't a good idea. You need more information on that. So I highly recommend take a look at that. We also get asked, is the ACR a certification? And no, it's not. It's a statement of conformance. It states how well a product conforms to each of the criteria listed for a standard or guideline. So no, it's not a certification kind of thing. So the VCAT, you know, this is, um, it, it gets used or it gets created um, in a lot of different places. So people think, oh, you know, my company doesn't sell to the federal government. I don't need to write these. And that's not true. Or are we here, we're too small a company. We don't have to do this. No. Anybody who's selling products needs to really be writing an ACR for their products so that anybody in purchasing can evaluate the accessibility of the product. So it applies to manufacturers, suppliers, small companies, large companies, everybody needs to be doing accessibility conformance reports. It's the standard uh, report for reporting, you know, standard method for reporting compliance. It also in turn allows the, the information to be used by all sorts of groups. You know, yes, this originally was created as part of a U.S. federal procurement process, but it's used in a lot more places. So um, people will do marketing research to see how products um, comply with Section 508 requirements. Um, government agencies, it, uh, both U.S. international, use the ACR. Um, sectors where accessibility is important, they will also use it. Corporations will use it in their purchases. Because it, you know, anybody buying products needs to make sure they're accessible for their employees and th their customers. You know, it needs to be available. The information needs to be available across the board to everyone. Um, ACRs are used a lot by consumers and also by the education areas. So in, when you look at the VPATs, there's actually four different editions. We had originally started with one and broken out into four separate documents. So there is the WCAG 2.1 version, uh, which is reporting just on the WCAG criteria. Then there's Section 508, which includes the WCAG 2.0 level AA criteria, so A and AA. If you use the EN edition of the VPAT, that includes also the WCAG 2.1 level A and AA criteria. And then if you want to, you have the option to use the international version which includes all of the different criteria. That way it's all information in one file. Which edition should you use? It really depends on your company requirements, your customer requirements. You, know, you need to look at things such as where are your customers? If you're an international company, you probably want to use the international form or you might use the individual forms and post them all. You know, it, it's totally up to your decision, but it's something that you need to step, take a step back, think about, and then use the document that's appropriate for your, your use. Where do you find these VPATs? 
Uh, this page has a whole bunch of links to the individual VPATs and what uh, standards or guidelines they apply to. But the biggest thing to know is to go to the ITI site to pick it up. So that would be www.itic.org slash policy slash slash VPAT. Now, Audio that's broke up. Also that you... This, this bridge, your audio broke up a little bit. I don't know if it's me or you. Unstable. So um, it lipped in the middle of that. So can I repeat the, the link for you? It's www.itic.org slash policy slash accessibility slash VPAT. Some, some additional decisions that you need to make when it comes to the WCAG stuff. Um, there's two versions of WCAG. There's 2.0 and 2.1 as of this time, which is January 2021. Uh, you need to determine which level or which version of uh, the WCAG criteria you want to use. And then there's also the level that you want to report, to, report on. There's level A, double A, or triple A. Um, obviously, in our Module 3 that talks about the ACR and WCAG, we're going to go into a lot more detail on that. But you know, some things to keep in mind if you're answering with regards to revised 508, that requires WCAG 2.0 level AA. And if you're answering the three, uh, EN 301.549 version 3.1.1, uh, that requires WCAG 2.1 level AA. Some other decisions you need to make, there's a couple more you have to look into, is um, what file format do you want to deliver your ACRs in? We supply the VPAT form in Microsoft Word. You do not have to use Microsoft Word. You can, in turn, complete your ACRs and put them out available to customers to use in an HTML file format, Microsoft Word, Adobe PDF, any of those are acceptable. Just make sure whatever you choose is accessible. There's also the decision to make on how you're going to publish these. Uh, you need to make them available to your customers. Not only the file needs to be accessible, but the method to get it to them it needs to be accessible. But you, you need to decide, are you going to make them available on your website? Uh, is it going to be downloadable from a, a website, you know, either viewable or downloadable? Or is it that they're going to be available upon request, you know, an email request? Again. Up to you guys on how you want to do that. You own this information, but just make sure whatever you choose to do is accessible. So some resources, um, all this information that we have so far, including these training classes, are available on ITI's um, VPAT website. Mary Jo gave that, that link. I'll give it again, you know, itic.org slash policy slash accessibility slash VPAT. If you have questions or feedback, um, we'd love to hear from you. Email address for that is info at itic.org, or you can call us at 1-202-737-8888. And we'd like to thank everybody that was involved in creating these this courses. Um, it was uh, involved people from HP, IBM, Intel, Lexmark, Oracle, and VMware. So um, again, we'd love to hear from you guys, and thank you for attending this and I don't know if there's any questions at this point that were raised. Mary Jo, do you, were there any? Uh, no. There were I not. see something in the chat. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, that was about the, the sound. audio breakup. So yeah. <laughs> we're good at this point. We, um, we're done with this module and um, hope to see you on module two.